But that shouldn't be the only thing that people sort out in pre-production. Um, you know, there should be the things that are sort of more in line with the creative process of, you know, how do we want this movie to sound? And, um, you know, it's, again, in the old days, and I still do it, but uh, I've talked to younger sound mixers that don't even know what I'm talking about. When I get a script, I do a script breakdown. Okay. I was talking to a younger sound mixer who was asking about, um, what do you do when you're first, you know, when you're first on the job and all, you know, what conversation? I was, well, the first thing I do is do a script breakdown. And they literally, you know, their jaw dropped and they looked at me like, what, what's a script breakdown? So I said, well, that's when you read. The script is the only thing you have. <laughs> yeah. um, you, know, you read the script based on your experience and you highlight those scenes that may be difficult or certainly if you have a scene that has music, you have to discuss whether we can do it live or whether we do it to playback or what is their feeling. Or if you see a scene that takes place in what you know is going to be a very noisy environment, you want to know what, what things have been done to uh, ensure that you can actually record good sound. So you do this whole breakdown. And it was a revelation to this young sound mixer that, uh, that we were even given the opportunity to do a breakdown. And unfortunately, there are lots of movies where the production sound mixer may be hired and, and they don't even get to do a breakdown. And even if they do the breakdown, it doesn't do any good because the production has already decided, yeah, we're going to shoot that location and it's horrible. You know, are you going to hear that? You know, we can't stop it or, you know, all these sorts of things. Um, but uh, it's to try and get early control over the shooting environment um, because one of the big rules of production sound recording is it's much easier to add things to a soundtrack than it is to take things away from it. Um, so that, uh, and, and this is all too clear if you watch any episodic TV show shot in the streets of, uh, you know, Manhattan or the streets of LA or whatever like that, that you end up having to build up every cut to the worst case of that traffic. Otherwise, the cuts will, will bump. So you end up with even more background than you had um, on anything. Whereas if you can actually um, get the background in, in the real world down to a manageable level, you can always add stuff. If you feel like it doesn't feel lively enough, it doesn't feel like there's enough cars, you know, whatever, so-and-so, you can put all that stuff in, but you can put it in in a controlled environment, you know, in, in, in an editing suite where you can control these things, not while you're out, you know, I worked on a film called The Black Marble, which was produced by Joseph Wambau, who um, wrote The Onion Field and The Black Marble. He was a writer. Um, uh, they made movies out of The Onion Field and, and Black Marble. Well, he was on the set every day, was not that familiar with movie making. Uh, we were doing a very quiet scene in a, um, a cemetery, uh, and uh, it was uh, uh, Robert Foxworth and um, uh, forgotten the the actress's name uh it'll come to me eventually but um but the cemetery that they picked was right at a massively busy intersection we were going to be shooting at four o'clock in the afternoon because that's how it worked out on the schedule it was going to be a real bitch and i figured um you know this was going to be a scene that would be looped unless we could get traffic control you know so uh got to the location and and um Joseph Wambaugh put on the headphones and listened to a rehearsal and he took the headphones off and he said, Jeff, I, I can hardly hear the actors. This, this is, this is horrible. What are you, what are you going to do? And I said, don't worry, Joe, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Um, and, and he was like afraid to put the headphones back on, you know, and finally he left the set, shot the scene. We go to dailies the next day and he's at dailies and he hears the scene. It sounds great. So he said, Jeff, he says, you're a genius. What did you do? And I said, well, I told you we would stop the traffic noise. Um, and he said, well, well but, but how'd you do it? I said, we stopped the traffic. Um, and uh, he said, well, what do you mean? I mean, like, is there, a, is there a, a, a long microphone? Is there like a filter? That... And I said, no, we stopped the traffic. And he said, and this is the next cop. He said, you mean like with the police? And I said, yes, we, had, we ended up having traffic control at that location. And while we were shooting the dialogue, we stopped the traffic. And he just went like, wow, what a solution. You know, again, he was sort of looking. He knew enough that microphones are directional and all this kind of stuff like that. He was looking for a technical solution when the only real solution that would really work is to actually physically stop that traffic. 
Um, and uh, it's a story that I've told to a lot of people when they really, they, they're hoping I can solve the problem by some sort of magic box um, because they really, they can't afford to have the police. They can't afford to stop traffic. They can't afford to secure the location. So, um, you know, you do what you can do.